I have someone very important and very special to introduce you to. Someone that I met at a particular point in my life where I really needed what he specialized in. This is Taylor. He is the world's greatest designer. And he's been designing for how long? About two years now. Two years? Yeah. When did you first start? 2020? I started in 2021, like around April. Uh-huh. Yeah, and around April, and then I joined Goat Gang pretty much the same month. Mm-hmm. Designed for a couple months, and I was posting my designs in the Facebook group, mm-hmm. and then you reached out to me, mm-hmm. and I didn't want to come out here. Well, I, hold on. What? Well, you came to a giveaway. Oh, shit. I forgot about I that. I didn't even know you. That's right. Yeah. So, yeah. I didn't I didn't reach out. So, Taylor, Taylor, Taylor likes to fast forward things. Uh, I didn't reach out to you. He came to a giveaway, and he won one of the giveaways. Yeah, I forgot about Giveaway that. number two, which yeah. was a trailer. Yeah. And he smoked everyone. And then I was like, this kid's crazy. Yeah. Psychotic. <laughs> he, he's crazy. Yeah, I wanted to win. Yeah, he has no no off switch. He just keeps going and going and going. I'm like, he's nuts. He's obsessed. And then I found out Taylor does designs. Oh, that's where we talked about. And it. I was yeah, like, yeah, yeah. what do you, you don't have a landscape company? He's like, no, no, I don't have a landscape. I'm like, well, what do you do? He's like, I'm a designer. Yeah. I was like, really? And he's like, yeah. I'm like, okay, cool. Nice to meet you here. Congratulations. Shake your hand. Take a picture. And I was like, see you later. Yeah. And then afterwards, I think it was like two three months, right? You, about that, yeah. yeah. I had an epiphany. Uh-huh. I was like, what if I somehow convinced Taylor to come do designs for Applewood? And at that time, I call you, and I was like, hey, Tay, what do you think the greatest idea would be if you come and help me do designs? Because I know nothing about designs. And you said you had a lot of offers, remember? Oh, right. You got yeah. Shiloh and a couple other guys mm-hmm. in the group. Mm-hmm. Right. And what were their offers? Shiloh offered me, like, I think it was a six figure, like close to 100K a year. Mm-hmm. And then there was some commission on there. And then the other one was Scott in Arizona. I can't remember, like 60, 70K or something mm-hmm. like that. Mm-hmm. Um, and then I, I also had my own thing at the time. You like, did? I was building my own thing. Where? What What town? Yeah. I was in Southern California, Orange County. Orange County. Yeah. O- OC. Yeah. Orange County is sick for the Zions. Yeah. Because there's money, money down there too. Mm-hmm. So before we get carried away, I want to backtrack and really understand who is Taylor. Yeah. How old are you? Where are you from? Where were you born? Give us, give us like the little... Uh, cliff notes of your life. Yeah, so I am 29. Yeah. Uh, I turned 30 soon. I did not know anything about landscape design. Like that's not my background. I went to college. I wanted to be a doctor, and then yeah, and that was like a whole because I'm Persian. My my whole family wanted me to like you know be doctor, lawyer, engineer kind of mm-hmm, thing. Mm-hmm. I didn't dig it. So then I ended up majoring in finance. And long story short, I didn't like any of that stuff. So I started my own business, doing something completely different. I was like in e-commerce and mm-hmm. stuff like that. And uh, so drop shipper, not drop shipper. Ah. Yeah, yeah, we had all our stuff manufactured in China. Yeah, but uh, fast forward all that, I was in a place where I had nothing to do, sold mm-hmm. the company, and it was like COVID during the pandemic. And I was doing a remodel, mm-hmm. that's what I was doing. I was doing a remodel for a friend, I had never done anything with tools before. Um, wait, so he was remodeling his house or his landscape? Well, it was actually my girlfriend, yeah, her parents story uh, opens up, yeah. <laughs> Her parents needed some remodeling done on the bathroom Mm -hmm. and they trusted me, but I had no experience. So I would just wake up every day, watch YouTube videos, fix something that turned into repairing the whole house. Wow. We did everything from like flooring, drywalling, electrical, plumbing. How long did this take? I thought it was going to take a month. Yeah. (laughs) It took me like six months and it was like 12 hour days some days, but every day I'd wake up, I'd watch YouTube videos and one of the days your videos came up, landscaping. And I was like, Landscaping, that's kind of interesting. Huh. So I kept watching him, kept watching him, and I was like, I want to do this. Wow. Yep. That's Just what a great offer. And I joined Goat Gang. I joined Goat Gang. I reached out to people in my area, uh-huh. like local contractors, and I, I didn't know I wanted to do designs yet. Yeah. I just knew I wanted to be in the industry. I thought I would start my own landscaping company. Did you like the fact that landscaping was outside and you get to work? Totally. Yeah. Dude, it seemed so sick. It mm-hmm. seemed very glamorous mm-hmm. on the front end. Mm-hmm. I didn't know what was there yet. I didn't mm-hmm. know about all the equipment and all the problems and everything. And as I got more into it, I was like, oh, shit. Yeah. So... I started off reaching out to contractors and a lot of them were just like, we could use somebody to help with like designs. And so I started doing that. Okay. When you reached out to contractors, what did you say? I reached out to a bunch and I said, I was general do- contractors, landscape contractors, uh, everything, okay. but, but a lot of landscape contractors. And I said, I'll do anything. Mm-hmm. I said, I'll do demo work. I said, I'll haul shit away. I said, I'll work for free mm-hmm. to most people. I said, I'll work for free. Wow. Yeah. And, uh, See, I told you he's nuts. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I just want to get experience. Yeah. I didn't know how to get experience in right. this field. It just felt like 
I didn't know anything. Mm-hmm. And so one person got back to me and I started doing designs with them and he didn't know how to do design. So mm-hmm. I was learning myself. I got your course, mm-hmm. I bought the design course and that set me up to freelance for other contractors. Yeah. So that, that really showed you how to do it. Dude, that, that helped me get my foot in the door. Yeah. <laughs> that, that one little course. Yeah. It was like two hours or something mm-hmm. and it set me up better than you know a degree or something could have. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so then you, you watched it and then you decided I'm gonna get a computer Yes. And then get the uh, program, like exactly. the actual Visterra. 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 Well. People always ask, what's the design software you use? Visterra. Yeah. So, uh, it's by Structure Studios. Yeah. It's the, we use other programs now, but if you're getting into it, that's like the easiest. Beginner, beginner. Yeah. So like I just follow around, along in his program and they just do it step by step. I built the whole thing. I was like, oh shit, that wasn't that bad. Mm-hmm. And uh, it's a valuable skill. Mm-hmm. So I still use that today. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, I used that for all the freelancing and I kept doing that, posting stuff in the group of what I was doing and then everything else happened. Did you have success in other fields like, uh, drop or sh- sh- shipping or e-commerce? Yeah. Yeah. E-commerce. We had a, like a fitness brand. We're yeah. doing, we broke seven figures a year. Uh-huh. Um, we're doing like knee sleeves, wrist wraps, stuff when you like powerlifting. Yeah. And just fizzled out. Like the competition was too strong. So right. we, we sold it because I didn't understand a lot about the time mm-hmm. and I wanted to keep doing that, but we just didn't have enough capital to yeah. start a new thing. That makes sense. That makes sense. So, um, I just, I just dropped that all together before that I was in finance and mm-hmm. that was pretty well, but I just wasn't for me. Boring. Yeah. yeah. Super boring. At the time you're 27 year old kid and then you're like, screw it. I'm going to come here and you drove up in your Prius. Yeah. It was a blue Prius. White. White. Okay. It was a white Prius and Taylor came here. Because he wanted to win a trailer in Dude, his I was, Prius. I was broke at the time. I know. I, I wasn't good with money. <laughs> I had bad habits. I drove up with the Prius, yeah. and I was like, "Dude, I need to win these tools." And by the way, the thing about Taylor was, is I I met him. I said hello, all that stuff. But then, as soon as the competition started, Taylor disappeared. No one heard of him. <laughs> no one even saw him. He didn't even make a peep. Yeah. Nothing. Yeah, yeah. He, he was literally go back and watch the video. He was literally in the corner by himself with a headband and just silent. Yeah. I didn't want anybody to know who I was or what yeah. I was doing. I would just like close my eyes. And I just, so the, the, the video or the uh, competition was like basically last person to leave the trailer mm-hmm. wins the whole trailer and all the tools inside of it. Mm-hmm. And I was like, dude, I'm, and, and you couldn't use the bathroom. Right. right? That's, 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 that was like the mean thing about it, but we didn't want the competition to last three days. Like, there had to be something. Yeah, if you pee your pants, you're out. And you couldn't sit down in yeah. the trailer. You should yeah. watch the video. It, yeah. was, it, it was tough, but I was ready to stay there for 24 hours. And what did you do to prepare? Oh, <laughs> I watched a bunch of videos on, you know, how to, like, dehydrate your body and, like, you know, so I didn't have to pee. And yeah. so before the night before, I stopped drinking water. Um, I took creatine because uh-huh. it, like, retains water. I saw some doctor talking about it. How much creatine? I don't remember, like a few scoops, yeah. not a ton. Uh-huh. And um, I brought like some candy with me and, yeah. and some other stuff, but uh, it was mostly just, I mean, it wasn't easy, mm-hmm. even with all that. I, like, I want to I fucking pee. I know. Dude. So. Ta- t- as soon as Taylor got out of the trailer, you just see him like, Dude, whoa. Dude, that was the longest piss I ever took. Yeah. All right, Tay, so before we jump in, I, w- I really want to go back to Orange County and figure out the journey of how you got your very first landscape design. Because you were not a landscaper, you were a designer. How did you get your first deal? Yeah, so it was the first contractor that got back to me. He had a job ready to go, mm-hmm. but we needed a design. And the first design, it was very, very small. It was just a front yard. Front yard, artificial turf, and some concrete up to the front door. Do you still have pictures uh, of those? Yeah, yeah, nice, yeah. Nice. We can we can share them. Okay. But that first one, I charged like 500 bucks. Wow. Or either five or 800 bucks, but it was, it was like peanuts. How long did it take you to do that? Uh, like a day or two. Nice. Yeah. And it, it was pretty good right away. There's like not much revisions. It was super simple, but I had no idea what I was doing. Mm-hmm. It looked like shit. Plants? There were plants, but it was all in the same plan. Uh-huh. It was plants, concrete, artificial turf, and a little retaining wall. One pager. One pager. Wow. Yeah. Okay. So then how did the construction go on that project? They handled it pretty well. Mm-hmm. I mean, the plan, it looked like shit, mm-hmm. but at the time I was really proud of it. At mm-hmm. the time I was like, this is- Well, this your is first it. one's always the best one. Yeah. I was like, I made, I made a construction plan. Yeah. Like, I was like, dude, this is going to be sick. Because right now I see Taylor uh, send designs to us and it's like eight, nine, 10 page nuts. I'm like, what? what is this? Because yeah. I remember when he first- was here and he was making designs i was like bro this is crazy yeah i literally call him i'm like this is taylor what what are you doing yeah you with mean? the new ones yeah 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 it's insane there's so much detail so, right okay so the first one the construction was built so you're very happy it went well yeah it came out nice what about the second second one i don't even remember mm-hmm. after that's all a blur they're yeah. all around they're all small jobs they're all i think like at the third or fourth one i got my first big one mm-hmm. and that was like 
80 grand. Mm -hmm. It was a full front, back, side yards, everything. Yeah. But that project here would probably be like 150, 200. Wow. Yeah. But that was a big one. And looking back on both of those, they look terrible. Really? Yeah. yeah. I, like they're really bad. But at the time they were great. At the time I was, yeah. I was stoked on it. I mean, in the yeah. beginning, no matter what you do in the beginning, it's, it's not going to be comparable to where you're at four or five years down the road. Yeah. When you're starting anything, I think there's a fear of failure and mm -hmm. a feel of looking stupid, but you got to look stupid in the beginning. You got to do it. Like that's just, the, you got to get that out of the way mm -hmm. where like whatever thing you're going to do. And then life is good. Orange County hanging out, doing designs, going to job walks. And then you come to the giveaway and then I make that one phone call to you. Yeah. What did you think after I asked you, I'm like, Hey, leave all the stuff you're doing in Orange County. Yeah. And come here, San Jose, help me blow up Applewood, do designs, be the head principal designer, number yeah. one. What did you think? What did you tell me? Well, first of all, I was like, oh shit, like t calling me? Like, what the hell? Because mm -hmm. I talked to you at the giveaway and yeah. sometimes like on Facebook, but nothing serious. I was like, damn, why is he calling me? Mm -hmm. And uh, you gave me the whole spiel, which is very convincing. Yeah. And, you know, I told you I'll think about it. He did. He said, he said, I don't know, man. I'll, th I'll think about <laughs> it. Let like, me call I you later. I don't know, man. <laughs> but I was very comfortable where I was. All my friends and mm -hmm. family was in Orange County. And your mom? My mom was there. Yeah. And, you know, I, I like, to see my family a lot, but um, it was tough because I had to get uncomfortable to mm -hmm. do it. And so after we got off the phone, I sit there and I'm like pacing, I'm like walking around, I'm like- Nervous. I'm like, dude. Palms are sweaty. Is this something that I should do? And so I was on the fence and you made me a deal yeah. to come up for the weekend. Uh -huh. Okay. I said, I said, risk free. Risk free. I even said, Taylor, I'll pay for your flight. Yeah, right. Which I did. Yeah, I everything paid. was covered. So it was a all expenses paid, zero risk to Taylor. I said, dude, let's try it out. Come over here. I'll pick you up from the airport. I think it was a Friday. Something like it was for the yeah. weekend. It was Friday morning. He flew in Southwest. It's literally an hour. Yeah. And he flew in, picked me up from the airport. I took his suitcase to my apartment. I said, this is where you're gonna sleep. And I said, let's hit the road, Jack. Yeah. So we went and I remember this was at the time where I didn't have any office staff. It was literally <laughs> only me. You remember this? Yes. It was only me and I had all my guys in the field working. That's it. So I felt like a big boss. I'm like, you know, everyone's like, T, how do you do this? You don't fucking work all the time, blah, 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 blah. But the thing is, I didn't have any office people. It was just me. I was a one man show. I was running the whole thing. So I was answering the phones. So for like literally a week, that week, Monday to Friday, I was answering every single phone and I was setting up design appointments. I was pitching hard. People were calling me, literally one ring I would answer. The phone was glued to me. Cause I wanted to <laughs> I wanted to convince Taylor, I'm like, dude, this is possible. There's you, a lot of work here. You can you can come here. And the first day, Friday, we hit the road. I think we hit like how many designs? Like Dude, it was a lot. The six, whole, seven? Maybe more. I, I, I was exhausted. I didn't even know what to expect. I thought we're gonna, I was going to come to San Jose. We're going to talk about what you wanted to do. We're mm -hmm. going to get dinner. We're going to have a good time. Mm -hmm. I get there. I get in the truck. We hit design appointments <laughs> all weekend long. And it was tiring. It was so... I was exhausted. But almost every single one of them closed. Yeah. And by the way, it's funny you mentioned the thing about being on the phones because the one thing I thought, we're in the car... He's taking phone calls from different people the whole time. He has the phone on his ear. He's driving. <laughs> he's doing everything. I'm like, holy shit, there's a lot of stuff happening right yeah. now. Yeah, I, I was literally... You're doing everything. Because I was, I was convinced. I'm like, dude, when you find someone that is so great at what they do and there's a lot of potential, you must do anything in your power to get them. And I was like, if I can get Taylor, if I can convince Taylor to see the opportunity here, and we were going to design appointments and we were charging literally, I think, $500. Yeah, I think the most was like a thousand or something. Harry Belly. Oh yeah, that was five hundred dollars. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Five hundred dollars. He gave us five hundred dollars cash, and then another guy. I think he signed with you for like six hundred dollars. Something like that. It was peanuts. We had, I think, we had maybe two, three thousand dollars of designs closed before you left. Right. And then now Taylor has to get to work. Right. And so I get back and I started doing all. Of them. Yeah. But that honestly, that was what really made me think about it when I got back. It mm -hmm. was like okay. If I go up here, there's a lot of business to do with somebody who I like working with. Mm -hmm. Everything's set up, and I can charge more down the line because we're charging those just to get our foot in the door. Baby peanuts! Yeah. Like I mean, you can't just go right out the gate and start charging big prices. Like, four grand, exactly. Now Taylor's charging several thousand for designs. Yeah, which, mi minimums like four or five k. That's what I'm saying. It blows me away. I'm just like, how is that even? But <sighs> there are people. There are literally people in the design space in San Jose that are charging. Fifty thousand dollars, dude. Dude, this and is just location. not even an architect. I know. There's like no degree. That, I mean, they're good at what they do. Yeah. But there's a lot of money to be made up mm -hmm. here. Crazy. Yeah. So the first day, you came here. 
we were going to hit the zines. How did you feel? Uh, well, I was, I didn't know what to expect. I was tired, mm -hmm. um, but I was excited to show you what I could do. Mm -hmm. um, I was excited to get the business and I just didn't really know what to expect, so. Um. Remember it was me, you, the wheel, and oh, yeah. a notepad. <laughs> and I was, I, I, I held the wheel, because with designs, now you can do geo mapping and drone mapping. There's so and all many this. things. Yeah, but before it was just ghetto. We're, we're like, just figuring it out. We are like, okay, we draw the backyard. I was filming you. Yeah, that's right, you were. Yeah. And we're going around and just wheeling the entire fence, wheeling the house measuring the windows yep it was and i was so... filming him on my phone while he filmed it and he was like 22 feet 23 feet yeah and i was just jotting everything down and filming him and then i get back i'm like watching it was terrible <laughs> it was really bad but it worked it worked whatever you got to do to get it to work if you don't know what to do like mm -hmm. you got to start somewhere that's true so you leave and i was actually so tired on sunday when i dropped you off i'm like dude i've never done so many things in a single time but i had a lot of fun and i knew fun. and i knew some appointments we went to i'm like oh this guy's a capper this guy's a capper this guy's a capper and i was like "Tay, this guy's a capper i'm like we need to get out of here yeah. we need to get out of here. He, <laughs> just, he was asking the guy was asking taylor questions they were just like he was throwing them in circles yeah and he didn't want to commit he's like oh maybe this maybe this so i can see a capper because i've dealt with customers but Sometimes people would literally ask you questions for an hour. Yeah, and it just comes with experience. Mm -hmm. Like in any new thing you're starting, like because you've been in it for a while, you know the red flags. Mm -hmm. You know like there are certain key words and phrases people will say like, okay, we gotta wrap this up mm -hmm. and get out of here. Mm -hmm. You just know that they're not gonna be a fit with yep. the company. Yeah, one of the things that I remember is, you know, give me the best price. Oh yeah. <laughs> give me a good deal. Uh, I wanna reuse these materials. Or, or a good one is, um, you know, if you do this job for me, you'll, you'll build your portfolio and I'll get you a lot more business. Oh, and I'll refer you to all my friends. Yeah, but yeah. I just need you to do, do a good price yeah. for me. I'm like, bro, we're charging $500 for a design. <laughs> <What do> you, <laughs> How much cheaper could it get? What do you want from us? They want it for free. Yeah, they yeah. want it for free. So anyways. So you went back to Orange County and now you're watching videos, putting everything in, and now it's becoming real. And I was like, hey, when are we going to deliver these designs? Yeah. And you had designs for yourself in Orange County that you had to wrap up. Everything was like overlapping. Yeah. So he did everything he could to wrap those up. And then he started these, wrapped them up. And I think after you met a month later, you decided to move all your stuff here. Yes. Well, I, I sold basically everything that I owned. Yeah. I was like, you know what? I'm just going to do it. Yeah. I'm going to pull the trigger. You know, the benefit to me was not just the business, but being around somebody. Mm -hmm. Like people want to learn from you, right? Mm -hmm. And me being around that was just like, it was a great opportunity for me. Mm -hmm. So I was like, I'm just gonna do it. Worst case scenario, it's like, what? It's like an hour flight away. Literally. I can always come back. And, and you drove here. I drove here. Yeah, Yeah. I drove here. I, I sold my Prius. Yeah. I bought a new car yeah. so I can fit some shit in there. Yeah. I found the place to live here. Mm -hmm. um, I crashed out in a bedroom of a guy's house. And the guy was very cool. You're still friends with him now. Yeah, and we're so cool. He was charging like 1,300 bucks a month. No big which deal. I was like, whatever. That's what I was paying in, no in Orange County. Yeah, you get, that's a good deal for here. You get your own room and yeah. you get your own bathroom. There's a garage and a backyard. It was nice. That's a great offer. So closed the deal with him, gave him the deposit, went back down, packed my shit, came up here. Done. It was a done deal. So then Taylor came here, and this was at the time where the second round when Taylor came here, I was in the process of hiring someone for the office. Oh yeah, and. My mom was actually at Macy's because my mom likes to shop and go buy whatever makeup, all this whatever girl stuff, right? And then she sees a girl at the clinic counter at Macy's selling makeup, and her name was Bree. And my mom was talking to her a little bit, and she's like, hey, would you like a job? And Bree's like, what kind of job? And she's like, my son has a landscape company, and he would really like to have someone work in the office helping him with the back end stuff, administrative assistant, right? Administrative role. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And uh, Bree's like, well, yeah, I've actually done admin work. She's, and mom said, why don't you come over and you, you can meet him after work? And she's like, when? And she's like, today. Damn. <laughs> and Bree's like, today? Yeah. It's like 940. And she's like, yeah, we live right across the street. Just come over. We can meet him. Boom, done. And Bree, being crazy enough that she, she is, it. She did it. That was a she, good sign. She came. It was me, Taylor, my mom, inside a little office conference room. And I was asking her questions. And then Taylor started asking her questions because Taylor had a lot of experience hiring uh, administrative people, right? Yep, before. Another and company. then he was asking really good questions. And I was like, can this actually work, dude? 
So after that, Bree got hired right away. Taylor came on. We got a new office, and everything started moving quick. so fast. It started going quick. And then we actually outgrew that office in a few months. Yeah. Because... You know, just rewind real quick, because one thing I noticed with... Even with the videographer with, with Gabe, with Coaster and mm -hmm. Cameron, yeah. all these, like, A players that you're finding, you're not going on, like, Indeed or, like, Craigslist and hiring. Like, you're finding them. Mm -hmm. Like, you went and found them on YouTube. Boots you, on the ground. You found... Exactly. Yeah. You stole... You poached Bree from Macy's because mm -hmm. you saw good qualities. Mm -hmm. And I remember you tried to hire that salesperson once because he was, like, a waiter. Mm -hmm. Like, those are the best people. Yeah. So, the thing is... And a lot of you may be like, well, team, you might have got lucky. But here's the, here's the honest truth. That I've had, I've offered a lot of job opportunities for a lot of people, but they are, most people are pussies, like straight up. Yep. They're just pussies. They're, they're shivering in their pants and they're quivering and they don't, they can't make a decision. So when I found great people, you got to just pull the trigger. You have to get them to commit. And, but most importantly, you got to be committed. So I think you saw in me that I was super committed. Mm -hmm. Bree saw that I was committed. Exactly. Bree saw that you're committed because we told her your story. Yes. And she's like, well, I guess this is legit. <laughs> so, yes. And it ended up working it out. It all starts with you though. Yes. Like, because I remember there are other contractors down there that they just seem so sloppy. Mm -hmm. They seem, I was like, how could we ever get anywhere? Like, how could my potential ever be reached with this guy? Mm -hmm. Because they're just all over the place. Mm -hmm. But then I saw you and everything's like, you're, you're on it. Like mm -hmm. you're dedicated. I'm mm -hmm. like, all right. I'll do this. And Taylor, you have this thing where you go 100% in. Oh, yeah. 100% in. Like, oh, yeah. Balls to the wall. Dude, I gave up everything. Yeah. I mean, it, wor it worked out fantastic. So now we're here two years later. Now, let's get into the how you got started here with designs. What was it like dealing with customers? Because Taylor, Taylor and I have a very special relationship. Like, he doesn't work for me, and I don't give him money on anything so he makes his own money so he he runs a business inside applewood so whenever he goes and sells a design for five thousand dollars taylor gets all five thousand dollars i don't get a piece nothing and that's the i think that was the greatest offer ever exactly because a lot of people they want to put taylor on salary they want to give him commission they want to do this but i'm like dude you have no cap if you go out and complete a hundred designs at five thousand dollars a piece yeah you grand. make 500 bands. Yeah. And that was important for me. Everybody's different. Yeah. Like you might be think if you're a contractor, you might be thinking about hiring a designer. There's a lot of people that fit well into that role where they just get a salary and commission. Mm -hmm. For me, I was starting the business and that was the big pain point for me was I had to leave what I was starting in Orange County. Mm -hmm. But because I had that offer and it fit me, then I had unlimited potential and I wanted to go get that. Mm -hmm. And there was no cap. There's no cap. There's no cap. No cap. As much as you can do, you can do. And the cool thing is, in the beginning, Taylor was like, all right, well, I need to freaking get uh, people to help me. Yeah. And he went down that route. And uh, tell, tell, him, tell him how you found the first girl to work for you, helping you design. Oh, okay. Well, actually, I started um, trying to outsource people, mm -hmm. like, in different countries that were, like, remote roles. And that wasn't really a fit. I'll get into that later because that's what I do now. Um, I have people working for me remotely but I just didn't know what I was doing at the time. So I needed somebody in-house and I needed to be able to work with somebody one-on-one -on -one. and you're just giving me too much business mm -hmm. for me to handle on my own. So I made my first hire. Um, she worked here for, for almost a year or a full year. Mm -hmm. Her name was Isabella and she was really good. And she helped me with a lot of stuff. She came out to the uh, designs with me and helped me with measurements. But I decided later, I think it was a few months ago that I was gonna transition back to virtual assistants, mm -hmm. which is what I do now. Because the, the deal Taylor made with her was that it was a salary position. Right. And not that she worked, I, I thought she worked fantastic. She was great. She was amazing. But the problem was there was not enough designs done in the month that she got paid. Exactly. Because every single design that she completed was pretty much a break even. Exactly. So I looked at the numbers at the end of the year and it was a great experience. Like there's no regrets about it. Right. But I was looking at the numbers and and I looked at what she was getting paid salary and then what essentially she was bringing in. And it was like dead break even. Mm -hmm. And so it didn't make sense to me because there was still a lot of effort on my end to help train on the role and all that stuff. And so it just it didn't make sense at the time because there wasn't enough money coming in from what she was generating. Mm -hmm. So unfortunately, I had to let her go. And, and I, that was tough for Taylor. It was hard. Super tough. It was really hard. He, it, he, it, he talked to me about it like two, three, four weeks in advance. It took me like a month to make the decision, but I decided the sooner I ripped the Band-Aid off, the better. Mm -hmm. And it was better. I, yeah. I had to start kind of like at square one again. And for two or three months, I was working on my own again, which sucked. But the pressure led me to make a few more decisions. Yeah. 
he came to me and he's like, T, he's like, I want to ask you what to do, advice. And I was like, and he told me that he wanted to let Izzy go. And I was like, damn, I love Izzy. And at the time, he also had another girl working for him. He had two. Yeah, I forgot about her. I was starting to go on a hiring spree because I thought that's what I needed. I yeah. thought I needed more people. And um, I started getting overwhelmed mm -hmm. because they didn't payroll. have any, Yeah, it was payroll. payroll they they didn't have any experience. And I had to make the decision quick yeah. because money was just flying out the door. Mm -hmm. Um, and so I talked to Tigran and it was a very hard decision to make. Um, I basically just let her go clean. I mm -hmm. told her that day, I gave her a, a week and um, I said, it's just not working out. It's nothing about you. Mm -hmm. And I told her I'll help her find a new job and everything. And by the way, she's found, she just found a new job recently Is with an architect. Nice. Yeah, wow. so she's, she's doing good. So she even had uh, experience coming from you and then boom. Exactly, and Landed. the architect reached out to me and I gave her a uh, you know, good Amazing, review. five yeah. star. Yeah. And she is five star, it was fantastic. She but was good. One thing that we learned from that experience was that if you are gonna have bring someone in, you give them a percentage of design. Right. It would have been much better if you sold the design for five thousand dollars and just gave her fifty percent. A commission of it. Yeah, yeah. Just like complete the design, here's fifty percent. It was a huge learning. Even sixty percent. Yeah. It doesn't even matter. It doesn't. Take take sixty percent, but at least when the job is complete, that's when you pay. Right. At least to start out. Mm -hmm. Like if it's a big operation, maybe you can think about that. But for me at that time, I needed to do the commission based mm -hmm. work. Yeah. So now Taylor is solo man. Back to solo man. Yes. After that, I was solo man. Mm -hmm. And I knew I couldn't do everything on my own. Right. So I, st I took on less work. I started booking out further instead of doing everything at once. Mm -hmm. And I did that for like three months and it was tough. And then only until the last few, few four or five months, um, I started hiring like internationally. Mm -hmm. So I have people that are helping me with 3D rendering. I have people that are helping me. Where do they me. live? So my main guy's in the Philippines mm -hmm. um, and they all charge on a flat rate. I mean, it's not easy to let someone go. No. It's very the difficult. The hardest thing to do. And you were churning, probably losing sleep. How did you have the conversation with Izzy? Cause she was fantastic. Yeah. She's part of the team and we're having lunch with her. Everything She's a great. homie. Yeah. You know what I mean? It sucked because when they're there for a certain amount of time, they just, they become a part of everything. It's like letting a good friend go or mm -hmm. something like that. But um, I've let people go before in other places and it was especially hard this time because of the dynamic. It was mm -hmm. like a family situation. And also I've never let a girl go. So right. I didn't want to hurt, you know. Like hurt, hurting a guy's feelings easy. Yeah, yeah like, like get the fuck bro, out. Hit the road. Yeah. Get out. Like, pack your shit. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> get out of here, dude. But with her, it was like I had to, I really wanted to make it seem that it wasn't anything that she did wrong. Right. That was the thing. And, but the thing is I didn't want to go on and on. You know, I actually went on Google and I had to Google how to do this really? because I was I was so concerned about it. Mm -hmm. So we didn't have ChatGPT yet at that <laughs> time. So otherwise I would have had ChatGPT tell me how to do yeah. it. But it was just very straightforward. I said, you know, I asked her if she'd come to my office for a second, close the door. Um, I told her, I got right to the point. I said, it's just not going to work out anymore. Yeah. Um, financially. Financially. That's There's the nothing you're doing. There's just right. not enough money for you right now. Right. But I'll do whatever I can to transition you. Mm -hmm. And she, she took it pretty hard. Right? She did. She, she, she was upset. Yeah, she was upset. Yeah. Um, but everything worked out in the end, and it, it was the best thing. Mm -hmm. You got to do the hard thing sometimes, and it was really hard to and do. And Taylor committed, and he bought each one of those uh, fancy computers is three bands. Oh, yeah. And yeah. I got an extra two of them. Yeah. So, so he, that was he extra spent, six, seven grand. He, he probably spent $10,000 computers, yeah, desks, monitors, equipment. mouse, Easily 10 keyboard. Grand. Yeah. Yeah. I and still have them. You do? Well, I sold one. You sold them. Okay. Yeah. So then he went full on committed, believing that if he just grows the design team, he'd be able to get more money. But the thing about designers is the learning curve takes a while. So and I was hiring fresh. They didn't have any experience before. Right. Where it's like with you and you're hiring stonemasons or guys to do anything else, you're hiring with experience. And I've said this a million times and I'll say it again. It is easier for you to go hire someone that has 20 years experience laying bricks than it is for you to go learn 20 years of experience. Totally. But if I if I go and learn twenty years of experience, I'll be fifty three years old. <laughs> <laughs> Who cares? Yeah, you know what I mean. It's way easier to go get a guy that has twenty years experience. So, but the thing is, you also started fresh, right? And in my and it's hard. It was hard because I'm still even now. I'm still learning. Mm -hmm. I don't know shit. Right. I'm still learning. But what I learned from you is exactly that: is that you're really good at finding people and hiring people. And, but for me at the time, for me to find somebody with 20 years of design experience, mm -hmm. there's no way I could afford that. Right. Figured something else out, but we'll, we'll get into that. Yeah. When Taylor finally got the ball going, he was reaching out to a lot of people. You reached out to Matt. Yeah. Matt was a really big influence. He helped a lot. Yeah. He was in the design game when I started the business. Yep. Him and I were competing for the number one spot on Yelp. Yep. And 
he was reaching out to me like, how are you on Yelp? I'm like, I don't know. I'm just doing this, this. And then he started doing it and he went ham. And now he has, I don't know, 120 reviews. He's like the Yelp. top dude. Top If dude. you type in landscaping or landscape design on Google, he's the top for the Bay Area. Always number one. And his clientele is very big and they trust him. They believe in him and they pay him a lot of moolah. Buko bucks. Yeah. Buko bucks. Uh, some of the designs are probably, in the beginning, I'm sure he was starting at a couple thousand maybe and yeah then i don't he know went to five fifteen twenty oh 30. yeah yeah and then he actually told me once he made the transition from charging you know five or seven or whatever to going like 10 to 20k mm -hmm. his business people started actually wanting to work with him more mm -hmm. and one of the customers that we actually just completed a job for which is that fancy pergola you guys see on instagram where the subcontractor messed it up and had to take it out the designer that the homeowner hired previous were going to hire they were going to pay him Fifty thousand dollars. Yeah, it was just a lady. Yeah, and then the problem with her is she didn't have enough bandwidth. Mm -hmm. So she was booked out. She was booked out for like a year on yeah. fifty thousand dollar designs. And they were talking to her in February, and she said that, oh, "Okay, I'll start your job in February." And they're like, "Oh, right away, great offer." No, she said next year. Yeah, and they're like, "What?" And then that's when they found Matt, and then Matt told us about the lady, and I was like, "Bro." blown away i'm like yeah she's making like a million dollars a year and there's no construction work she's just drawing the designs yeah so yeah. the the higher echelon you go it seems like you just get more work and i know a lot of you on youtube you guys hate on me because like, oh you're charging, charging half a much. million dollars doing this but the thing is the more you charge the better clientele you get and the less garbage you have to deal with absolutely there's still garbage there's <laughs> there's, there's, there's still problems but yeah less of it pro problems don't go away but the thing is with the money because that is the biggest problem. So now, where are you at now? Now I am, so I worked on my own for a little bit, just figuring things back out. And now I am actually outsourcing virtual assistants, mm -hmm. people that can do this work that actually have the experience, like mm -hmm. actual architects, yeah. but from other countries. Right. And you know, I can talk more about this if we want to, but I have a guy, my main guy, he's in the Philippines mm -hmm. and he's like a licensed architect in the Philippines. Wow. So he knows a lot more than me but he's more affordable because the cost of living there is a lot lower. Super low. And he charges on a flat rate. Mm -hmm. So I know that if I charge 10K for this design and he costs 1K, there's gonna be profit at the end of the, every month. For sure. And so I have him, I have another guy coming on board, I have another guy coming on board, and I'm kind of filling in all those pieces individually. Mm -hmm. Almost like how you would subcontract for like concrete or something. That's kind of what I'm doing with designs yeah. right now. And there's still a ton of work for you to do. Because so much. The thing about designs is, People always come in goking and they're like, T, I want to become a designer and I want to do a lot of jobs. And I always tell them, I'm like, you have to pick one or the other. It would be impossible for me to do what Taylor does and be impossible for Taylor to do what I do. Two of those things done by the same people is not. Dude, it's impossible. It's not. not. I, I put in, I don't, I don't even do anything else. I just, right. I, all I do is work, but only on designs. Mm -hmm. I don't know how somebody could do both of it. Right. It's just not, like, it doesn't make sense. Not only does he have to do Zoom calls with the guys in the Philippines, but now he has to do Zoom calls with the customers. Yeah. And a Zoom call for a design, hour? Yeah, it's an hour. An but hour? there's there's a lot of them because you go through revisions. Yeah. I got to go back to the site. I got to show them materials. So there's still a lot of work on my end, you know, boots on the ground situation. And every single time I've sat with Taylor when he's doing a, design consultation with a homeowner that he already has a deal with he's literally just <laughs> notes 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 yep. notes notes just typing away yeah and he has google docs of just notes for every single project oh, yeah. and mm -hmm. i'm like bro this is crazy like you have to be so detail oriented you gotta and, get everything and if you mess up people are pissed yes that's what now are. and that's where technology comes in too right. now i've gotten a lot better now mm -hmm. with ai i actually have the calls recorded mm -hmm. and then the ai takes all the notes for me wow but it's still yeah but it's still a lot of work <laughs> Yeah. That's a great option. So there's a lot of things and a lot of tools that can help out, but I still have a lot of work on my hands, even though I have people helping me. So now when it comes to actually charging for a design, after after you and I had this whole we go on job walks together, eventually I had to let Taylor do his thing. And I remember in the way beginning when we went on job walks, I was the one talking to the customer. I was finding out what they want. And then I was like, okay, Tay, I think this is how this is how I would talk to a customer over design. And then literally on the second or third job walk we went to he took the wheel oh on the same day he did yeah, yeah, he started yeah. driving the bus and i was like i was literally I was, standing, <laughs> I was standing here i was standing back and i was like wow he's really like going for it yeah and i was so happy because you took initiative and you just went for it so what was it like going on your first job walk by yourself i felt fine yeah. because i had done this 
in Orange County so many times. Mm -hmm. I already had the reps, but I still didn't know everything. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of bullshit coming out of my mouth just mm -hmm. to fill space. Mm -hmm. And I was, they're asking me a lot of questions I don't know, but I just had to seem credible at the time. Mm -hmm. So I was a little nervous, but I was still confident. Did you have imposter syndrome? <laughs> Absolutely. Oh, dude. <laughs> I was like, I don't know shit right now. Yeah. And so they're asking me a lot of questions, but it gets better over time. Yeah. And by the way, this whole imposter syndrome thing is just complete garbage. Of course, you're going to feel out of place. You don't yeah. know anything. Yeah. It doesn't mean anything. Yeah. It's just like you have to go through those reps. You have to be uncomfortable at first. In the beginning, you're not good at anything. You must be good. And now customers come to you and now you're actually have an authority in the space and you can actually tell them no this is now not exactly. good exactly that's this, a good point this is good that's a good point because in the beginning one of the biggest mistakes i was doing is i was an order taker mm -hmm. like a like a waiter waiter like a waiter at a restaurant mm -hmm. what do you want here what do you want there and i started hearing from clients on other designers that came by that they didn't like that. Mm -hmm. And so now that I know some things, and I still don't know a lot, um, I actually can have the authority to tell them, no, you shouldn't do this or you should do this. Mm -hmm. And they love that. Mm -hmm. They don't know design. They don't, right. That's why they're hiring a designer. That's why they're hiring a contractor. So the big change that I made was now that I, I can kind of lead the ship when I'm at those design mm -hmm. appointments. And we, we saw this from Matt. Matt, he even told us, he's like, sometimes you have to like just tell the customer, no, this is not good. Yeah, and he's like, good at that. And and I was like, you really just tell them, like kind of yell at them, no? And he's like, yeah. And Absolutely. I was like, wow, Taylor, we got to start yelling at people. Yeah, more. <laughs> so now all we do is yell at people and it works. <laughs> this is my way or the highway customer, listen. So now you're in the process of charging people. Mm -hmm. And your first design, you went solo. When you and I went, it was mm -hmm. $500. Yeah thousand dollars right and then where was that bump where you felt uncomfortable to charge a homeowner two grand how long in um it happened pretty quick because there's just so much business the reason i started raising the prices was not because i thought oh i need to raise my prices it's more because there's so much business too many people exactly and so the the value for me to take on the extra work i had to charge more mm -hmm. and so i bumped up to 1500 mm -hmm. and they're like Okay, and I bumped up to two thousand. Mm -hmm. Okay, there's no resistance all the way up to three thousand. And every couple of months, I just bump it up a little bit because if I'm booked out two or three months mm -hmm. worth, of, worth of work, I'm gonna bump my prices mm -hmm. because there's too many people signing at that price. Right. You know, and the more I charge, some people fall off, but for the right reasons. Like right. I didn't want to work with them anyway. Right. Um, but the better higher end clients that are easier to work with are now coming in. So it's easier to do the work now, and I'm getting paid more. The more you charge, the better it is. The better the people are. Seems like a uh, interesting theory. Rich people pay rich people prices. That's true. Yeah. The cool thing about uh, Taylor coming to Applewood was that he doesn't have to take phone calls. It was Bree taking phone calls. Oh, it helps so much. And it just gets him time to focus on his craft. And in the beginning, I remember this specifically. We used to book design appointments for you on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, yeah, Friday. All over the place. And the thing is, like, Taylor has a, a design that he has to do with a customer, so he has to do a presentation with them, and that'll take an hour. And then he has to go to a design appointment, and a 30-minute, 40-minute consultation, that's a two-hour ordeal. Yeah, because you got to drive there, you got to drive back. Yeah. That's not even, the, the time issue was not even the biggest problem. It's that I was had a block of time to work and design mm -hmm. or do whatever, and then it would get interrupted. Breaks and I have routine. to break my focus and yeah. come back. And so that was a bad offer. Yeah. Terrible. What really helped me is just batching things, mm -hmm. batching things together. All my appointments are after like 1 p.m. Mm -hmm. on a certain day. They're all batched together, so I'm doing that same thing. That way it gives me time to do all my designs uninterrupted. Right. All my Zoom calls are at a certain time of day. And so everything's batched instead of just like scatterbrained. And now, Tuesdays are your entire day for job walks, customer visits. The whole day is booked. Yeah. A whole Tuesday is booked. I'm actually starting to shift that over to open up other days just mm -hmm. because some people only have weekends mm -hmm. and some, and, and that's fine. Like when you're starting out, even if you're in year two, year three, you can't get like this ego and think, you know, I get to say where my schedule is and open up like two hours. You still got to sell. Mm -hmm. You still have to open up the big deals. And I've closed big deals by showing up on the weekend. Mm -hmm. I would have lost those if I was just like Mr. You know, Big Shot, mm -hmm. only Tuesdays at three to 4 p.m. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, a lot of people, they're like, why are not getting business? Once you charge $50,000 to design, then you can do that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Once I'm there, for sure. <laughs> so, and the, the thing is, like, I remember uh, talking to Taylor about how a customer's tone on the phone is. And I could tell as soon as someone calls, if they're just going to go, if yeah. they're going to, they're going to sign. And you call it. No problems. Like, they don't care about price. The guy's very short on the phone. He calls. And he's like, "I want a landscape. I want a design." No, he's like, "I want, I want, I want you guys to come in and build my backyard." Yeah. And then we're like, "Okay, great." 
Um, do you have a design? No, you're gonna need a design. Okay, how much? Four grand. Okay, when's an, when's an appointment? Uh, we can come out there Tuesday. Okay, what time? Yeah, three o'clock. Straight to the point. Okay, I'll be here at three o'clock. Done. It's gonna be half up front, half later when it's done. Okay, cool. Yep. Those are the best guys because you go in there, he's already ready, he knows, he's done his homework, the reputation speaks for itself, he's seen his designs, and he just signs. Done. Right. They're ready and to go. Those are the people I'm like, hey, whatever day it is, Wednesday, Thursday, just Friday, it. just go. And every single time <laughs> it's been a deal. Yeah. Yeah. Just leave, bro. Don't even don't even worry about it. Just go. And those are the best customers to ever work with because they're so easy going. Oh yeah. And especially on the construction side. Oh yeah. Because the less involved the customer is, the better it is. If he just get, comes out, does, the, oh, what about this? What about this? Oh, this looks great. Okay. And he goes back. The guys that are super picky and annoying, those are the ones that are problems. Totally. Yeah. yeah. Even with design. Absolutely. And Taylor's been an OG and he has done a design with someone and he comes and says, T, this is a bad offer. Yeah. Pass on this one. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So like if I have a design experience and the customer was just really tough the whole way through, we know it's going to be a problem mm -hmm. on the build. Mm -hmm. We know it's going to be a problem on install. So I'll tell Bree, I'll tell Tigran that it's like either take this and add some cushion to it just to make up for it because it's going to be an issue or just pass it on. Mm -hmm. And every single time there were a couple that were kind of on the fence and they didn't turn out that great. Right. Yeah. They were trouble. They were. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know what I'm talking about. I remember. Her. Yeah. She was trouble. When Taylor and I first went to our job walks, we were charging $500 for a design, and we didn't really have contracts. We just said, yeah, we'll do it. And it's right. a very low barrier to entry, but when you're charging six, seven, eight thousand dollars $8,000 for a design, you're gonna need to do a contract. Totally. And how was that whole contract experience? How did you make it? Yeah, I mean, when we started out, it's just, we were just trying to get the work and mistakes were made. Expectations weren't set. Exactly, so if you don't have a contract, they might wanna come back 5,000 times and make revisions for the next two years straight. Mm -hmm. There's no cap on, on what the, the scope of the job is or what the work is that's gonna be done. And so I slowly started making a contract and I started including that, only two revisions, only three revisions, stuff like that. They get to the revisions. Yeah. Oh, and also in the contract. And what, okay, explain what a revision is, first of all. Do you kind of just ask them what they want or you just shoot by the hip and whatever you want? Oh, I mean, so when we start, we have a design a design consult where mm -hmm. I go in person, I talk to them, I mm -hmm. ask them all the stuff they want with their backyard. Do yeah. they have kids? Do they have pets? Do they want a pool? Figure out the basics. And then I also have a quiz online that mm -hmm. they can take mm -hmm. on typeform.com and it just has pictures they can select, what they're, we gotta find out their budget. Ah, so you wanna, you wanna figure out what their vibe is. You gotta get everything. Yeah. yeah, you gotta see if they're vibing with you or not. And how do you ask someone, what is your budget, Mrs. Smith? Yeah, so that's a sensitive question that a lot of people are scared to ask. Mm -hmm. You have to phrase it in a way where it doesn't seem like you want to know so you can charge them that budget because mm -hmm. we're not out to get them for their budget. Right. We just want it to make sense that they're not designing something that they can't afford. So I asked them, you know, are you more in the range of 10 to 30 grand or are you more in the range of 100 to 200 grand? Mm -hmm. And that doesn't scare me. It just filters it out right away. Like, mm -hmm. oh, yeah, I'm more 10 to 50 grand. Like, got it. Okay, got it. This and, is what we can do for that. And sometimes what is what is your range? Can you ask a customer 500 to a million? Yeah, absolutely. Wow. Um, so on the type form, I actually cut out 10 to 50K because mm -hmm. I want to start getting those higher end clients. But it's like 50 to 100, 100 to 250. It goes all the way. And then there's also a million plus. So would a customer, would it be worth, let's say a customer says $50,000. How much would you actually charge the customer for a design? If it's 50 grand? Yeah. Well, the minimum I'm going to do now is like 4,500, five grand. Uh -huh. It used to be less. Is that entire property or just front or back? It depends. Sometimes okay. it's a $50,000 front yard, but you got to set that expectation up front of mm -hmm. what it's going to cost. Mm -hmm. Because in the beginning, when I was working with Tigran, I think, remember that one project where his budget was 200K, which is pretty good. Oh, yeah. But it came out to be like almost a million dollars. The railroad guys. Yeah, yes, the railroad, the railroad ties. ties. Yeah. Yes, that was one of the first projects, and it was a big one. He wanted the ohm installed in his, uh, yeah. it's like this, this, uh, Indian, giant symbol. Yeah. Indian. It's Indian, right? Yeah. Yeah. It's like an Indian, uh, symbol made out of concrete, made out of concrete. And he wanted, uh, the ohm made out of pavers and it was sick. There was steps. There was a sunken seating area. Beautiful. But the, the problem was, and you're going to make mistakes and you're going to look like a fool in the beginning. Mm -hmm. My number one problem is I wasn't asking enough questions. I wasn't setting expectations. So I just designed, I took orders of what he wanted. And then by the time the design was done, it's like, okay, Brie, okay, Tigran price this out yeah and then it was like a jaw dropper because when it, we did price it out it was half a million dollars it was and more it was like 750 yeah. or something and the guy almost literally had a heart attack <laughs> but 
he had so many crazy finishes and the thing is his property was thousands and thousands in square feet it was huge massive he had a corner in fremont and it was just huge and we even said we're like dude it's literally impossible to do this for 200 grand like like the materials alone is gonna be like 200 grand the, yeah just 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 the concrete and pavers and all your finishes are gonna be 200 bands like it's just physically impossible and he's like okay well i appreciate you guys telling me the truth blah 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 he's like i'll get back to you i don't know what happened to that guy he never Zero. I think he went with like another designer another company yeah but so in the beginning it is what it is learning experience we had and by the way you only charged him like 800 bucks for that it was nothing <laughs> yeah so whatever yeah it's not even a big 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 deal but contracts can literally save your butt in the beginning and in the end because it sets an expectation and it prevents the customer from taking advantage of you and also from you taking advantage of the customer Totally. Yeah, I tell them that too. This is for both of us, mm -hmm. you know? And so there's clear expectations. There's revisions, what they're going to get. I don't really put like the timeline because it's ambiguous right. depending on how long it could take, but it's very straightforward and it just protects me. Mm -hmm. Good offer. What does a typical date of a designer look like? It's always changing for me, but right now it's, I come in, I usually wake up around six o'clock mm -hmm. and the first thing I do, I don't do any like fancy like yoga or workout first thing in the morning. I just get straight here at the office mm -hmm. first thing and I just design. Yeah. Um, I design, I have a, like a three or four hour block and I'm just designing, working on concepts, drawing that sort of thing. After a few hours, then I'll get to like my emails, then I'll get to all like the ad, admin work. And then after that's usually appointments. Mm -hmm. So like afternoon or 1 p.m. and on, I'm getting measurements from houses, I'm meeting with clients, I'm hopping on Zoom calls. And so everything's really blocked out. Mm -hmm. And that's pretty much every day how it is. Some days are different, but most of the time that's what it is. And you're sitting behind a computer by yourself in a room. You have this big monitor. So oh, it's huge. In the beginning, we, we got Taylor this massive, how many inches wide is it's it? Like 40, it's like 50 inches wide. Yeah. It's like four feet long. It's this big. Yeah. Literally, it's, it doesn't even fit on the camera. Yeah. I think it's a uh, Samsung G9 or G7, something like that. One of those. Yeah, things. one of those. And he has like window, 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 window. Yeah. I got like the design screen. I got my emails. I got my notes. I got my browser. So it's really nice. How many hours of actual design work do you think you can physically do by yourself? By myself? Like in a day? Yeah. I've done a whole day. I've done like. 10, 10, hours. 10 hours. Yeah. After that, like my eyes, my back, like You're fried. you have to like with the computer work, you have to get up. Like I'll take walks around here sometimes. He, he does. Yeah. yeah. He goes I'll stop. Work. Sometimes I'll work out in the middle of the day or stretch, mm -hmm. but you know, I try not to do that much because I'll, I'll get burnt out. Super burnt out. It's easy to get burnt out. And coming up to my next question, do you ever get burnt out? <laughs> yeah, that's a good question. Um, I think in the beginning I was when we had the first office because mm -hmm. I was just doing everything myself and I was working there. So I was there till like eight, 9 PM sometimes a lot. I was there a lot and I was just like everything else was kind of falling apart mm -hmm. like in my like my life like my fitness my health and I, I was getting towards burnout but I think in the beginning you you can't really be balanced everybody right. talks about like how do I be balanced in my life but at some points you're not going to be balanced and that's okay because mm -hmm. you're trying to get this foundation going now everything's more structured now I know I can only do this amount of design work before I need to take a break so now it's fine but definitely burn out in the beginning. And on the weekends, sometimes Taylor comes in on the weekends, but most of the time his weekends are for himself. Like you might you might go see an important customer that just by hearing the tone of his voice, this guy's gonna close. Yeah, absolutely. And you work right now four four days, like four days of legit design. Yes. And then one day of appointments. Mm -hmm. And then maybe on some Saturdays and Sundays, there's an emergency. You need to come in here and bust out a design real quick. Yeah, and that's totally fine. Yeah. I think I could probably work more mm -hmm. if I want to move faster. But right now I'm at a point where like I can get steady growth and I'm not burning out. And it's mm -hmm. like my happy medium. And dude, like I always say this a lot and it's all dependent on the quality of your life. Because if you're making a million dollars a year, but your quality of life is horrible and you hate everything about your life, you dread waking up, you're not going to be motivated to do bigger and better things. Yeah, it's you're not gonna, sustainable. It's just depressing. Yeah, absolutely, dude. <laughs> and, and it's just like lame. So but you got to have fun. I think at some points though, like for those of you that are just starting out, whether it's design or you're starting your own landscaping business, I think it's going to be tough in the beginning. Mm -hmm. It's not going to be balanced and you, it's going to, some days are going to be nightmares. You're going to mm -hmm. have customers yelling at you. Yeah. You're going to be making trips to Home Depot, whatever it might be, but you're working towards something where it doesn't have to be that way. Mm -hmm. It shouldn't be that long, especially if you're in Goat Gang. Right. That's true. Yeah. That's very true. I noticed that you have a lot of books in your office. Yeah. Uh, what kind of books do you read that 
you take a lot of inspiration from? Yeah. Um, so like I said, when I first started out, I, I really didn't know anything. I didn't have a degree. I didn't have anybody teaching me design. You know, I have Tigran as a resource, but he's a contractor. Like he knows landscaping, but landscape design was foreign to me. So I have a lot of, I looked up what the landscape architecture books people use for a college degree was, and I got those and I read through those. I got like inspirational books mm -hmm. of like, design in California. And a lot of my designs in the beginning were just copying from those books mm -hmm. or from like Pinterest online. Besides that- Nothing wrong with that, by the way. No, that's how you gotta do it. Yeah. You gotta, these people know what they're doing for 20, 30 years by me copying that. It's just, I'm learning. Okay, it's a proven proven design. Exactly. It works. Customer likes it, designer likes it. Designer liked it so much, you put it in a book. Exactly. <laughs> and you can't you can't copy it perfectly because right. everybody's backyard's different. Right. But I can take a piece from it and a piece from another one and kind of, you know, make like a melting pot together. Mm -hmm. Besides like design books, you know, Russell Brunson, that's a good one. Uh, he has the ClickFunnels thing and stuff about like website creation or running a business. Those kinds of books are really helpful mm -hmm. for me. Uh, one I'm reading right now is Naval Ravikant, The Almanac. I really recommend that book. It's really good. Interesting. Yeah. Almanac. Almanac. I don't know how to read. Sorry. <laughs> Me either. <laughs> I'm illiterate. When you go meet a brand new customer, what are some questions that they ask you? Yeah. So they're asking me a lot of questions and I'm also supposed to be asking them questions, but the biggest one by far is like, how much is this going to cost? Mm -hmm. How much is this fire pit going to cost? What can we do here with this space? Is it possible? Mm -hmm. And those are really easy questions. And I'm asking them questions most of the time. Do you have kids? Do you have pets? And the big one is how do you use your backyard? Mm -hmm. Do you have people over all the time? Like, are you entertaining? Do you like the barbecue? Because this will help you decide if you should give them an outdoor kitchen or if they want a pool or whatever. So budget and purpose. Let's say there's a time where a customer asks you a question. You know, in the beginning, I thought that I had to have an answer for everything. Mm -hmm. It's a big mistake. And for some things you do want to kind of do that. But now I am just honest, you know, I will say I can talk to our contractor about that because a lot of the questions that I can't answer are directly related to like the build side of it. Mm -hmm. and I'm like, you know, I don't know enough about that to give you an honest answer. Let me look into it and I'll get back to you. And a lot of times people respect you being honest more than just bullshitting them. That makes sense. You gotta circle back. If you don't know the answer, you gotta circle back. Yeah. And if you're honest with people, straightforward, they'll trust you. Yeah. Some people, you gotta do what you gotta do to get the job, but a lot of people have bullshit meters. Mm -hmm. Like they'll pick up on it if you're bullshitting them and you'll lose the job. Right. So don't be scared of just saying you don't know something. Right. Before we go into the blitz questions, the rapid fire, Blue 42, I wanted to ask you, would you recommend the boys and girls watching right now to become a designer? Absolutely. I mean, if you like being out in the field and you like being in the office and chilling behind the computer, it's like the perfect balance. You don't have to be artistic, but it's fun and I'd recommend it to just about anybody. Do you use the more right side of your brain or left side of the brain? I don't know which is which, honestly. <laughs> <laughs> I think right side is more creative. Creative? There is a creative aspect. There is it. a creative aspect. And if you like being creative, you'll like the job a lot. Mm -hmm. um, but you don't have to be, I think a lot of people want to be creative, but they're like scared that, oh, I'm not artistic or I can't draw. Mm -hmm. Like I said, I copy a lot of shit from mm -hmm. people. And so you don't have to be good at drawing or anything, but if you like being creative, if you like creating things, I think it's the perfect job. And do, being a designer and running a business, is this something that you can do at the same time? Or, cause a lot of people fall into this trap of, oh, I'm an artist. Yeah. But most artists die broke. Right. You cannot die broke. You have to build a business. You have to charge people. You have to collect money. You gotta improve your life. Yeah. And I'm sure that is gonna be a thing that you really push home in the next coming years. Oh, dude, I mean, you you can be the best artist in the world. Like literally, there are artists that are really good at what they do, but Da Vinci. If well, oh, exactly. But if nobody knows who you are, how are you going to get business? And if you don't get business, you can't become a better artist. So you have to I'm constantly juggling those two things. I'm constantly creating and I'm constantly like hitting the drawing board. How can I get more leads? How mm -hmm. can I close more deals? How can I improve my sales pitch? They go hand in hand. Right. Now for the rapid questions, how much can you earn as a designer? It depends where you live, but if you're in a place like the Bay Area or LA or Orange County, any big city, it's unlimited. There are designers that charge 50K a design and you can make, you can make seven figures a year, definitely. And what do you like about your profession? I like the fact that I get to set my own hours. I get to be creative. I get to talk to a lot of people. Um, the customers are really fun sometimes, but yeah, it's a great profession. And what do you hate about your profession? That's a tough one. Probably the worst thing is sometimes there's a lot of revisions with difficult clients. It really just boils down to the client. Like mm -hmm. if they're all good people um, and I like to work with them, then I have no, no qualms with it. And what about advice for 
brand new designers. If you're a brand new designer and you don't know where to start or you don't know where to get business or you don't know how to create a design, get around people that do. Like that is the shortcut to anything. Go talk, like I talked to Tigran. I got in Goat Gang, I got in a community. And these people who have 10, 20 years of experience are just like downloading it into your brand. So the more time you spend around the person who you wanna become, the faster you'll become that. That makes sense. And if you wanna be someone, you have to get around people that are doing the same thing. Exactly. Same field. Find somebody who is already where you want to be and just shadow them. Work for free if you have to or work for peanuts and just get in a community of people that are better. Mm -hmm. And now, do you consider yourself a designer? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I consider myself a designer. Very nice. Yeah. So this is Taylor. His Instagram is right here. Add him on Instagram. Follow him. He's in Gil King. Message him personally. Ask him questions. But Taylor has a lot of real world advice, real world knowledge, and pretty soon he's gonna come out with a whole video on exactly how to run through a design from A to B to Z, all, everything in between, all the recorded phone calls, yeah. like it's just a lot. And if you, have, if you have questions that you wanna see in that video, message me on Instagram or on Facebook and just tell me what you wanna see and I'll put it in there. And how long does a typical time investment take from a customer calling in the beginning mm -hmm. to finishing to completely done how many hours is it man it is so it depends so much but i would say average like 30 to 40 hours mm -hmm. but some of the bigger ones could be like over 100 hours and if you divide 100 hours by it's like 10 grand yeah 10, like a, that's 100 bucks an hour yeah that's not that bad yeah you i mean i don't want to be anything less than 100 bucks an hour right yeah yeah but in the beginning we were like 20 dollars an hour <laughs> in the beginning it was like two bucks an hour for yeah. some of them yeah so don't be afraid to go out there and actually Provide a good service for bottom barrel because when you are starting out, you are bo bottom of the barrel. You have no experience. So, boys, hit the link. Go add Taylor. Comment. Tell us what you liked. Like, subscribe. And we'll see you on the next one. Peace.